wants to make a crochet jacket. I have some criteria for you and we're gonna talk about that next before I take you to my studio. So I have a great little pattern for you today. It's from extra small all the way to five extra large. There is several diagrams that are in the pattern itself. It does say that the pattern is easy. I'm going to bump that up a level to intermediate. Um, I saw some counter arguments on this that if you don't know how to whip stitch, then it doesn't become easy. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to demonstrate on how to make the individual pieces itself. And then I'm going to rely on you to use the diagrams to put it together. And then I'll talk about how to do the final. So my goal today is just to show you how to do the individual pieces, how to look at those uh, schematics, and then you'll have to do that on your own. So I'm not doing the whole project with you on camera. I just showing you the basics so that you can be successful on your own. So let's go to my studio. Hi, I'm Mikey from The Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. This is my friends at Yarnspirations.com and today is the Crochet Granny Square Jacket using a four and a half millimeter and this is a US 7 hook and we're also using Red Heart Super Saver in Ogo format but if you have Red Heart Super Saver in regular format you can do that as well and uh, it's actually really kind of a cool pattern. So we have all the way from extra small to five extra large in this particular one. There's a lot of instructions here but it depends on what size you're working on because you'll see a lot of schematics. So each one of the schematics is a different size uh, of jacket. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm gonna just demonstrate how to do the individual pieces itself and then I'm going to rely on you to be able to sew your stuff together and also apply the final border that goes all the way around the jacket itself. So you will need to know how to whip stitch today in order to do that. I will demonstrate that just to be clear but as far as putting all the pieces together you just have to follow the uh, schematic. So it's classified as easy. I'm going to bump it up to intermediate level um, just for peace of mind because I do think you need to have some crochet skills just to be able to do this a little bit as far as like whip stitching and being able to follow the schematics. So without further ado let's just dive a little bit harder into this pattern. So I'm flipping. There's a lot of instructions but what's really really nice is on page number three there's all the crochet diagrams that we have. So we have uh, three different motifs that we're gonna play with. A full square, a half just like you see and then this one here. So depending on what size that you're working with that you have to follow the kind of the schematic that you're going to do. So you'll see in the schematics let's just uh, bring you in a little bit closer here and you can see this is extra small to medium. So these are all the pieces that you'll need in order to put it together. So that you have the, the fronts, the back, and you have to make two sleeves and then this is how it's brought together. So you can see how it's whip stitched together. So you see there's the um, triangle, the full square and then the, the half square. And then you can see a large, extra large, two and three extra large. These are what you have going on here in order to make it work. Okay and then you have the next page which is the four to five extra large. Of course the larger you are uh, the more squares that you'll need uh, for this particular example in order to make that happen. Once this is all put together then you're going to then do a final edging which then starts at the bottom of the back and just basically comes around back up the top and then back down and all the way around. So you'll be doing that as well today. So that's something that you'll have to do on your own but let me show you how to do the individual pieces and talk about how the colors are working out in this pattern. So the pattern has multiples of colors that you see and this is in the jewel tone of the Ogo. So when you look at Red Heart Super Saver in Ogo format these are all the colors. So what you're seeing here in the squares is that each one of the rounds is controlled. So it's not just this, uh, this just crocheting itself out. You're controlling the color. So let me put a video right now on how to separate your Ogos when you have these so that you can have all the individual colors on its own. And if that's a pain for you then you can just make solid granny squares or do whatever you feel is necessary but the colors in something like this is actually really neat and that's what you're seeing here. So let's open our Ogo and what you wanna do is put your hands in behind and see this hole. You wanna just use your fingers and just push those flaps up and the top will peel and you're just gonna pull back and it is sticky right in the midpoint and you're just gonna pull and there is your Ogo. One thing that you should know is that the colors are equal length all the way around but they don't always start at the exact same spot. So a part of the color may be over on the other part of, of the side. So we wanna take it out 
just like that. Put that aside and you wanna pull like this and this will reveal a plastic tie that is in between. So take in your scissors and that will open it and then grab that tie and pull and that will take that out. So that's what's holding it as a ring. So you can see that this color here is also on this side. So when you start your idea you may want to start at a particular point if you want the entire color sequence. So if you wanted to start with this color and not this color all you have to do is that you just have to reach in with your fingertips and just pull like this and just kind of hold the colors and you'll see that the ogles will split apart like this. So if you wanna do color play that's exactly how you do it and there is the color transition change right there. You can snip it and then begin at this point and therefore you have a fresh color of this. So and here on the page number two we have the square motifs which will kick us off. This is the number of motifs that you're going to need is 25, 25, 34, 34, 34, or 52. So it, there's a lot of great notes here. So the exact sample that they do they have all the notes that you can read on your own in being able to do that. So they recommend that when you separate your ogo you put, and put them in a Ziploc bag so that they don't tangle depending on how fast you crochet of course and if you're moving around with it as, as well. So what you can do is that you can look at your schematics and look and count the number of squares but they have that available for you. And so that's a neat idea. So if you're not sure what size you're working on you can measure your bust size Okay, and then the finished bus size. So do you see how the colors match each other? So the same order of what the number of squares is. So let me just move that up. So you can see that you're just working in the same order. If you're colorblind, it's in the exact order that you see. So extra small, medium, large, extra large, two to three, four to five. So this is extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, two to three extra large, and four to five. So let's begin and let's start with the square. So let's begin with the slip knot. I am using Red Heart Super Saver off camera. I'm just using some spare yarn with a four and a half millimeter size US 7 hook. Let's begin by chaining four. One, two, three, and four. And let's slip stitch to the beginning chain to form the center ring of your granny. So just yarn over, pull through. And when you start the next round, just treat this loose end as just uh, something that will be buried and put it around the ring so that it gets stuck underneath. Let's begin round number one. In round number one you're gonna wanna keep the same color so just a chain six. So this will count as a double crochet and a chain three space. So you're going to chain six. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet and four, five, six, that's a chain three corner space. In the center ring here we wanna start going around so you're gonna apply three double crochet to start. So one and put that straggler underneath that ring so that you can get it stuck underneath, right? You don't have to sew that in later. It is a wearable so you may want to tack it in anyway. So chain three to turn and then back in the center ring three more double crochet. Chain three three more double crochet into the ring. So now you, you can physically see that you have three sides completely done and you have this oddball here. So chain three to turn the corner. So this is a double crochet as I mentioned. So in the ring on the final side you'll only apply two double crochet. So one two, oops, and two. And once you're done with that I need you to slip stitch to the third chain up. So you can count the number of chains that you had. So the three is in the space so it's right here. And once you have that done your first round is complete. I want you at this point you can if you went over the top of the straggler you can safely cut that down. It should never fall out on you. And you wanna snip the other yarn and using a tapestry needle and I highly recommend this because it's a wearable is that turn the square over. I'm only gonna demonstrate it once today and I want you just to hide in that loose end with the tapestry needle. 
the secret to doing something like this is that when you go in don't just go between stitches. Separate those plies intentionally on the back side. It's harder to follow out if you're separating plies. A lot of people put it in between um, strands itself and so it can just wiggle its way out but if you put it between the strands it just it will secure it in a lot better and you wanna do it a total of three times back and forth. And just stay to the back of the square. Once you have that done you can just save the cut and round one is now complete. And let's start a new color and round number two. I'm going to be bouncing between two colors today just for clarity reasons and I'm just using spare yarn as I mentioned. I would start with the slip knot on the hook and you're just gonna come into any chain three space. It really doesn't matter. And I highly recommend um, when I do stuff like this I always like to change where it is so I can see this is where I finished so I'll start somewhere else. It prevents like a seam being on the same axis and it jumps it around but you can decide if that works for you or not. So I want you to put your hook into a chain three space. Pull through that attached it and now we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, that's your double crochet. Four, five, and six is a chain three space. And just move this over. So you've just gone around the space. Put the straggler down on top of this. And I want you then to put three more double crochet into this corner. So one, two, and three. I highly recommend then at the end of this take the straggler and use your tapestry needle to hide it in completely. Okay, so don't just cut it where you see it because it will fall out. Once you have that done you're going to then chain one and you're gonna move to the next corner because it's the next available space. So in the corners in this particular pattern will always be three double crochet to begin. Chain three to turn and three double crochet. So you'll always do that in the corner for your squares. Now to jump to the next space you have to chain one first and then you have another corner. So it's three, three and three. Just remember three double crochet, three chains and three double crochet. Then chain one to jump to the next space. So there's chain ones in between separating the groups of three if that helps you to know that. You'll see that becoming more obvious as we move along in this tutorial. So another corner is three double crochet, chain three, and three double crochet. Okay, chain one. And then you're coming to where you started. So you already have one double crochet in so you're gonna finish it with just only placing in two. Okay and then you'll just attach it to the third chain up. If you're not sure you can count it back. And that color would be done. Okay, so what I'm going to rely on you now to do is just to be able to fasten that yarn off and use your tapestry needle and I've already shown you how to do that and let's move on to round number three. Next, let's move on to round number three. Again, I'm just bouncing between two colors but you can change it to whatever you feel. If you are using your Ogo, you wanna make sure that you're using solid colors and not letting it change midway through a round. So it's just something you may have to do and you may run out of one color and then have to jump to like run out of the one color so you may have to jump to another ball of the same color in the same round as well. So that's just something you have to be conscious of. So I want you to attach to any chain three space corner and chain six. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet, four, five and six, that's your chain three space. In the same corner apply three more double crochet. Are you understanding that's exactly what you did before? Hopefully so. And we'll hide this straggler in later. So to jump to a new space you have to always chain one first and then go into the space. 
it's no longer a corner is next. So you're just gonna fill in these spaces going to the next corner. So there will always be three double crochet in these spaces. And then chain one to separate those from the next group and the corner is already next. So the corner is always, already, always the same of three, three and three. This is uh, classified as an intermediate level to my point of view. So make sure you do chain ones before you put in the next group. And for most of you, you probably know how to do a granny square as it is. So please go all the way around. This is round number three and I'll just stay quiet for the remaining of the round. So I'm coming back to where I started. The last one will only have two double crochet because you've already chained your six and three of those were counted as a double crochet and you will slip stitch to the third chain up. You'll get rid of this color for round number three and meet me back here and we'll start round number four in a moment. So let's start round number four. Just growing this out to be bigger. Start on any chain three space corner and chain six. So attach. And one, two, three, there's a double crochet. Four, five, and six. Let me just move this camera a little bit. And three more double crochet into the corner. So one, two, and three. And I'll hide that in later. Now, when I continue the space along the side, there's more now. So the chain one always to separate those and then just jump to the next space and place in three double crochet. And then chain one, separate those out. So chain one and then jump to the next space and there's three in there. So the distance between the corners is obviously getting bigger. Okay, so chain one before you start the corner. The corners are always the same of three, three and three. So what I'll do is I'll leave the camera on and I'll be quiet for the remaining of the round.
When you come all the way back around you remember the last um, side our corner is already partially done with this chain three. So you're only placing in two double crochet only and attaching it to the third chain up. Let's get rid of this color and do the fifth and final round and the fifth and final round is the most important round of them all on all of the motifs. So you're going to notice is that the black is the dominant color. So the black is what's used in the very final round and that's because when you go to sew things together if all of the motifs have the same color on the exterior of the last round or row um, what happens is that when you go to sew things together it will be almost invisible. So it's not like a color backing up to another color it's basically the same color on all the motifs being uh, joined together. So that's something you have to consider. So for round number five or row number five depending on which motif you're doing you wanna make sure that the color is going to be the dominant color which will then be used um, to join and also do your final touches. So let's do the fifth and final round for your square and it's what you already know and cho uh, choose any chain three space corner and you already know what to do at this point so you're joining it in chain six. and then put in three double crochet into the same corner. So this round here this will determine that green is going to be my dominant color. Okay so once that's in chain one and then start filling in your sides. So I'll be quiet for the remaining of this round. So I'm coming all the way back around to the first corner and you're only putting in two double crochet and then you're joining it to the third chain up. 
So that's going to end and you're going to finish this off and get rid of this yarn. This was the final round of doing your squares. So you need to do the amount of squares that it's recommending in the pattern for the size that you want to do. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna come back and we have to explain what the difference of this square versus the other two different types of motifs because there's something that's happened here that the other two motifs cannot do. And I'll explain that in a moment. So when we were making this we were going in a continuous revolution and you can see all the right sides are facing up depend, uh, no matter which round we were working on. So this is the wrong side. So what you're going to notice then in the other two motifs is that because you don't have the opportunity to go all the way around you have to work in rows. But what's gonna happen is that when you start a row you have to then um, go across and then end it and then you start the row like a typewriter back at the beginning and you do it and then you finish it and then start back at the beginning. So you're going to notice that this is going to happen each and every time that we're gonna be working through this pattern. So let's get ready and move on with the half square. If you're doing a configuration like me the very first one uh, round number one will be the ending of round number five if you're just doing two colors like this. So let's begin. It looks really kind of unique. I just had to take a second look at that and we're going to begin and using the same yarn and hook. Let's begin a half square. Let's begin the half square and we'll start off with the slip knot and we will chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four and join to the first chain to form the center ring. And keep that straggler so it's around the ring and let's begin officially row number one. This one is unique. I've never seen a square do this before so the very last stitching uh, of each one of the rows is gonna be unique. So just watch this. So we're going to chain three. That's your first double crochet and you are going to double crochet then into the center ring. That's one side complete. The corners will still be the same of chaining a three. So one, two, three and in the center ring again this is a full side so it's going to be three to double crochet. So we have one, two and three and then to ch turn the corner it's like before so chain three and watch how we finish this. So we're gonna do a double crochet first. I've never seen this done so watch. I keep saying that because I'm actually kind of fascinated by it. So double crochet. Now you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and slip stitch into the ring. I've never seen that before. Isn't that neat? So this chain three counted as the last double crochet that went in. So I've already shown you in the first motif on how to weave in your ends. So just get rid of this color and let's move on. And you have to remember that when you go to start you have to go back to where you began. So you're where you're finishing now you're not just gonna turn your work and go back the other way. You literally have to start back over here and continually go into that formation. Okay? So let's do this. Let's fasten off our yarn and I'll be right back. So let's begin row number two. It's a row because we're not going in a continuous circle. So look at it from this perspective. It's how you can see it in the diagram itself. So if you were left handed it would be turned the other way like this. So I do have a left handed version of this. So I want you to start here. So we wanna keep this side flat. We're gonna go into the top of the chain three and in that stitch it looks a little bit deceptive in the, in the um, diagram but watch what you're gonna do. I read the instructions so you're gonna join it and chain three. So one, two, three and it looks like that you're gonna go into the space here but you're not. You're just gonna go into this chain three and double crochet. Okay and in this particular row you're gonna come right immediately to the next space and you are going to apply that's right three double crochet chain three, three double crochet so you're doing a, an official turn. So one thing that you're going to notice in this particular square there's no chain ones that separate these chain uh, these three double crochets from each other. So you just immediately jump to the next space and apply three double crochet into it. So there's no chain one spaces. Okay. And then 
this is a corner so you chain three and how we're gonna finish is the same way that I showed you before. So in the top of this chain three you are going to apply a double crochet first and then a chain three to go back down and attach it to that last stitch down there. It keeps a really nice edge. I, I have to think about this for the future. It's a really neat idea. So now fasten off your yarn and that was round number, our row number two. Okay, let's begin row number three. So make sure you reset your square to back to where it was so that you have your flat side again. Top of the chain three is where you're going to begin the journey. So attach it and okay attach and then chain three. So one, two, three that's your first double and in the same one of that one you're going to double crochet again. As I mentioned in the, in the last uh, round is that what we have to do is we have to consider what we're doing in this particular uh, stance. So in number three we're just going to jump over. So we're not gonna chain one to separate those. We're gonna jump right to the corner and apply three, three and three. Three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. I have a natural instinct to want to put in a space between these groups of three. So if you see me do it just ignore me and just immediately so you do your three and then just immediately come to the next. It's between the groups. Okay the corners next so you want to do your three, three and three. see. <laughs> okay and then in the top of the last one here you want to place in in the chain in the chain three in the top of the chain three you want to place in a double crochet. Okay and then chain three and slip stitch back down into the same stitch and that will be the ending of round number three. So fasten off your yarn I'll be right back. Okay row number four let's start our yarn and orientate ourselves. So we got our flat side back up top of the chain three join and put in chain three and then in the same one of the one you're going to place in a double crochet. In round number in row number four to see this space you're going to apply another three double crochet in there. and then jump immediately to the next corner. So the corners are the same as we talked about several times already. Just jumping to your next spaces without a chain one between them. This is the corner so treat it like that. Okay and then on the those last side make sure you go uh, put three into this space and then immediately jump to the top of the chain three and place in a double crochet first and then you know what to do. You're gonna chain three and slip stitch back into that same one to finish that uh, row and this is row number four. Okay so let's do our final row now. Number five next. Okay ready for the fifth and final. So let's 
no big deal hopefully and it's slightly different on the edges as well. So let's begin top of the chain three. Make sure you got your orientation up and join and chain three. And in the same one I want you to apply two double crochets this time. It was only one in the last few rows. This one is two in there. Now you're going to jump to the next space that's available to you and it is right here. Kind of feels wrong doesn't it? But go with it. It's all about alignment in the end. Then once you have that one you're going to go to the next corner and fill that into what you already know. Three and three and three. Okay, and then work your way along the side without any chain one spaces as I mentioned. Okay, your next corner, three, three, and three. And then working your way down the other side. Okay, that was the last space before you get to all this and then in the very last one here in the top of the chain three you're going to apply two double crochet this time instead of just one. And then chain three to come back down to that stitch. And then that's where the journey ends on this particular half motif. So let's get rid of this yarn and um, let's talk about what we're gonna be doing next. So you now have a half the square. Not all the sizes need this. It depends on the schematic and it says that in the instructions as well. When you go to start it says make six six and that was for the small to medium size and then the five extra large um, uh, four extra large five extra large also has this. So you're gonna see that some of the sizes don't even need that so that don't waste your time and they will butt up against the neighbor when they're ready. Because the colors are the same you're gonna use the same color to join so that it becomes an invisible whip stitch along the edge. Let's move on now to the triangle. So let's move along to the triangle. There's only two uh, triangles in your pattern completely and it's right in the top of the uh, front part of the jacket. So let's just uh, pull that out so it's right in the top here. And so there's one and two. So it doesn't matter which size you're working on. There's still only two square or uh, two triangles. So what we have to be paying attention to that it says that the chain three at the beginning of each one of these do not count as a stitch or at least chain threes don't count as a stitch. So I don't know if that really matters so much uh, but we're just gonna work our way through it and let's begin and start our triangle next. So I said it kind of doesn't matter and meaning that the fact is is that when you're count, I don't know if you're really gonna be counting stitches on this thing because you can just count the number of spaces. So that's probably what I mean by that. So chain four. So one, two, three, four and join with a slip stitch to the beginning chain to form the center ring. And again like before make sure the straggler goes around the ring. Let's begin row number one. In row number one we're going to begin and you're gonna chain three. So this does not count as a stitch. Okay. <laughs> See how that changes your world? Not much. Okay, so now you're going to go three double crochets into the center ring. So we have one, two, and three and then we need to turn a corner. So one, two, three and then in the same ring three more double crochet. So we have one, two, and three and before we're done it's like those um, half motifs you're gonna just chain three and slip stitch back down into the ring to finalize that one. I've already showed you how to weave in your ends on the last motif so please do the same thing and we're gonna start row number 
um, two next. So let's get your orientation right. So like the half motif that we worked on. Okay. So your point should be over here. Let's begin and this is row number two. Let's join it to the top of the first chain three. And then we're going to join and chain three. So one, two, three doesn't count as a stitch. In the same one that you have that in coming out of three more double crochet. So one, two, and three. And now you're going to come to your next corner here. And in the corner it's what you already know. You notice that there's no chain one spaces that separate those. So it's three, three, and three. And then on this row number two you're gonna come all the way to the chain three at the end. And you'll apply then three double crochet. And then chain three to come back down to where that is it and join it. Huh, I'm so fascinated by that. Let's uh, get rid of this yarn and move on to row number three. Okay let's begin row number three. Come to the top of the first chain three, get your orientation so it's right. Attach and then chain three. And in the same one that you did that, three more double three more double crochet. Now you're gonna come to this next big space right here and place in three more double crochet. We're not ready for a corner yet so three double crochet because the corners are getting a little further apart and now the corner is right here. So then you apply three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet. Once the corner is done just jump to your next space. Three double crochet. And to finish row number three come to the last chain three space uh, chain three top of it and a place in three double crochet to begin. And then chain three to jump on down and attach. Okay let's move on to number four next. Okay let's begin number four. Get your orientation up and attach to the top of the chain three. And now chain three and then three more double crochets in the same one you did the attaching to. Okay. Once that's done you're just gonna come to the next big space and put in three double crochet. So you're gonna keep doing that until you get to the corner. Okay so now the next space. And then your corner's next. Your next space is right there. Next space. And then finally at the end in the chain three you're going to apply in three double crochet. And then Yes, that's right, chain three and join down to where you did that. 
where I did that. <laughs> okay, let's finish that and start the fifth and final row. Okay, the fifth and final should be the same color that you're attaching all your granny squares with. If it's up to you, it's your call. You are the artist at the end of the day. So at the top of the chain three, you're going to attach. Yes, that's right. And one, two, three, that's your chain three. And place in three more double crochet into that corner. When I say corner, it's the top of the chain three. Okay, so now you're just gonna jump to the next space and apply your three double crochets in. So I'm gonna talk to you about other things while I'm here. So you're going to notice is that this granny square plus or this granny motif plus the other half square does not have a finished side on the one side. So when you're going to do things with that you gotta make sure that you're consistent about the spacing of your stitching uh, when you're going to do anything. So on these particular ones for the um, the triangle when you go to do your final edge that is like the collar section you're gonna evenly space out your stitches along this edge to continue around. And so once you do it the first round then everything should be evenly spaced. So you just gotta watch that when you go to do that. On the half square motifs when you go to use those and put those together they're at the seam line um, I think generally at the at the sides. So on the sides of your stomach I suppose or your waist. So you just gotta watch how you're putting those together because they don't have a finished side. I find this one's easier than the half square. Okay, so um, come into the last chain three and put it in and three double crochet there and that's right you're gonna place in a chain three to go back down to that same spot and then come on down. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of this row and this is the end of this particular uh, triangle. So you only need two for your particular example no matter what size you're working on and let's talk about our schematics. So let's talk schematics. The way that they see this being done is that it's a really a neat idea in order to um, have the concept of being able to put things together. So see how they have them already separated? I would put it together so that you have your two big granny squares, your three half squares and your triangle all together as one unit before you start applying it. So then you will want to do that with all your particular panels that you're going to do in order to make that happen. So it's a really neat idea. The only difference in the sizing is that there's more squares and what you have to pay paying attention to the most all the way up to three extra large on the sleeves you see that they're made up of two full squares this just like you see and they're on the shoulder line on the largest size sample here you will notice that there's three instead of two and that the shoulder line is actually um, a portion of one granny square. So it's actually sharing the same one going over top of the shoulders. So you'll notice that the seam line for those ones will not be at the shoulder like it will be here. And that's just a matter of attaching it differently that you see all the instructions for the measurements are given here as well. So what are the black things on this sleeve? So you'll see it there and this is called sleeve edging. So you have to do your edging in order to make that make sense. So that will appear uh, underneath of your arm. So if you're holding your arm out it will be underneath. And so what we were doing is we're applying some edging there and you will notice that that's happening in all the different sizes. So let me explain how that's gonna happen and it's just a matter of working across your sets of three. So you're gonna do your sleeve edging before you apply it to your main project. So you wanna get that all done here. And so there is a repeat section going on in that. So let's just talk about that. Once your sleeve edging is done for the and it's only in the uh, uh, medium, large, extra large and two extra large and five. So the very small size you don't actually have to do that. So just make a note of that. Okay. So what we have is that you're going to have your motifs already attached together. So you'll have it as per the diagram and you were going to have the right side facing up. So RS is right side facing up. You're going to work your way across. So chain three and count as a double crochet and work 65 
double crochets evenly across the sleeve and then turn. Once you turn you're gonna chain three and it'll be one double crochet in each of the stitches all the way and turn. And here you're going to notice a, a set of instructions that is specific, specific to your size. So you're going to notice is that repeat the last row either once, twice, three, three or zero times. So depending on what size, so this is the medium, you can see the color. It matches the instruction up here. So medium, large, extra large, two extra large and you see four to five extra large. You don't have to repeat at all. Once you have the one edging done, you're going to turn the whole thing upside down. So once you get your edging, turn it upside down and do the edging on the other side of that and you're going to do across. So you're gonna need to do this with both of the sleeves before you're gonna continue to attach it to your project that you see. I will be demonstrating how to uh, whip stitch in a few moments but what I wanna continue to do is talk about how to attach. So for the different sizes that you see that the seam line matches across the top of the shoulder for these extra small to medium all the way to three extra large. It's not gonna be until if you're doing the five, four to five extra large, you were going to notice is that the seam line is about halfway through the, the second square and it will give the instructions of 20 inches or sorry 10 inches. So it's 20 all together. So you're gonna have it at the 10 inch mark. So you can do that as well. You can measure it once that's done. So what I would consider doing if I were you and I were and you were me, I would be whip stitching your item across, match your two pieces. Okay and what you wanna do is that you wanna have your wrong sides facing together when you go to do this. So when you have a project like this, we've been working on the right sides facing up. So and when it says wrong sides together it just means these are the wrong sides. You sandwich them together and you're gonna whip stitch along your edges in order to make that work uh, for you. So it's kind of a neat idea on how you wanna do that. So what I would do is do the upper and the, the sorry the back and the front pieces. I would put them together first and then I would attach your sleeves second and then roll your sleeves and then whip stitch along the, the base of your sleeves. So let's talk about the whip stitching next. So using the schematics you can actually attach your panels together in order for it to make sense. So when we have it, let's just look at the front left. So if you wanted a front left like this, you just match what you see. So you would have um, one down there. You would have a triangle. Let me just uh, zoom you out here. And you'll have a half triangle here. And then it says that you have a portion. So you wanna attach these sides together. So what I would do if I were you is that I would use stitch markers in order to hold it um, or safety pins and hold the corners together and sometimes you just need to stretch things in order to make it work for you. Right? They didn't want it to be too loose and so then this would be an upper panel. So when you go to do your edging you're just gonna follow up and just go across this so it turns on an angle and then continue with your particular pattern. So let's um, show you how to do the whip stitch and you wanna use the same color that you're going to apply um, the final edge with. So using a tapestry needle is to do the best idea. You can you can single crochet or slip stitch this stuff together but it will be really obvious. So you have to decide what's gonna work for you. Create a slip knot on the one side of the, of the strand and then put your tapestry needle through the other. And just start off with an edge. Now you have chain threes in the corners. So start off in the back loop of the one and you want the back loop of the first right here. Now this would be considered the called, they would call these the inside loops and other patterns depending what pattern you're, you're looking at but I just saw that recently which is a really easier way to say it. So just push this through that, that slip knot and what that will do is that it will lock it into position and leave that straggler on the back and you'll use a tapestry needle to hide it. So getting the next back loop on this one and what you're going to need to do is that you need just to kind of pin them together because sometimes things can happen and you may be missing stitches. So it's, you have to keep an eye on where these are coming together to make sure that they're aligning, they're aligning properly. And so just going to the next loop and the next loop. 
So let's just say for example that um, you, you need to advance one because you're, they're out of alignment. What you can do is that where I just came out of, I can just advance to the next one but go back into the same one here and what this will do is that it will create a realignment to happen. And so by using the same color, you can see that the join is considered invisible. This is also called an invisible join. It's my favorite join of them all because it can really hide in any imperfections as well. So where it goes wrong is that if you decide to use a different color other than the main color that you were um, doing the outside with, it'll be really obvious so, uh, where those joins are. As a kid, I used to watch Roseanne because it came out when I was a kid and I would look at that afghan that was on the back of her couch and I'm like, how in the hell <laughs> did they do the um, squares so nice of putting them together and what I realized that they probably have done a technique like this using the same color yarn that was on the exterior of each one of those um, squares that they had. So you see you're just working your way all the way across and give it a good tug once in a while and make it really look good. So once you get to your corner, if you have to jump across to another um, set of squares, you can do so. So you don't have to end your yarn just on one side here. And so what I wanna do is just kinda look and see if it's gonna align properly. So I wanna pull this back a little bit, so I'm gonna skip one and go to a second one over and then go to this one here. And that will pull it back and a, a realignment. So you'll spend a little bit of time sewing but you know a lot of the work is in the actual doing the squares itself. So if you want to jump to another set you can do that and you can apply um, something else here. So another square and just immediately just coming in and I would attach it on a diagonal like this. Okay and then what I will do is go in to this one and then grab the one that's existing here and then pull that back into alignment so that the squares are attached right on the corner itself. And then once I'm done with that I can just then whip stitch along the other axis and our axes in order to get that to attach together. So that's how I would attach it if I were you and let's talk about the final edging and more. So here's my really crude diagram. So what's gonna happen is that once you have everything together and all the panels are assembled together, the final edge is actually the edge that will just follow around the back and then it will come around the front and then goes up the one side and then across the top and then around and the back down. Okay and this will take you all the way to the back to where you had started. So that would be considered how you're going all the way around. Where you have to watch the most is on these triangles right here on both sides is that when you go across and let me just zoom you out here is that when you do that first uh, round you just have to evenly space your stitches along this edge here just to make it look equal. Be extra fussy. You will notice that it will ruffle out if you're being too slow and adding the stitches too slow and it will buckle and if it's, it will like buckle in if you're being too quick. So look at the spacing of the stitching that you're applying here and apply similar spacing when you're just going along the edge. That's the only kind of stressful thing about this whole thing. Once you get that done which is only two triangles then the remaining of the stitches that you'll find along the edge already match and that's kind of a neat idea. Now there is some cuffs on this thing so you're going to notice that there's one to four rounds of that and so once you get your, your uh, sleeve all put together and sewn you'll have your round circle. So it says join with the main color at the slip stitch of a, of a sleeve and the slip stitch or chances are it will be underneath like this. And so you're just gonna go all the way around your cuff and it says to work 44, 56, 60, 64, 64 or 70 depending on the size all the way around. You wanna be consistent about this being off by a stitch actually is kinda noticeable to many people. So you just wanna be count your stitches to equally space that out to get around and once you do the first round to do that then the remaining two, three and four is just one single crochet in each stitch just working in a circle. So once you do the first one attach and do the second going around and then do your um, 
your second to fourth rounds also with that to finish off your cuff. And that's kind of a neat idea, right? So it's uh, not too hard of a pattern. It's classified as easy and I think that it is but um, for some of you that may be learning to crochet this might be harder than you hope for. So it's one of those ones to be honest uh, that you know it is easy but you have to have a little bit of skill at the same time. So hopefully you enjoy your new crochet granny square jacket and I hope that you have an amazing day wherever you find yourself in the world today. Bye bye.